Good morning. And welcome to Grace Church. I see some of the Daringers back here. Press is back up babysitter. Hi, Amy. Um, thank you for those of you who did message me about Press. He is perfectly fine um, last week. Turns out he was teething. So no big deal, no sickness. But the doctor bill is still a sore subject in our house for that. <laughs> so that's all we're going to say about that. Um, our announcements for this morning, remember Wednesdays from 4 to 6, everyone is invited to eat and fellowship together. The menu this week is Pastor's Choice, unless somebody else wants to volunteer to cook. So if so, you can talk to Pastor Bev. Um, and then you're invited for Praise and Prayer starting at 545. And then make sure you sign up on the connection table to be a part of Vacation Bible School this summer. That is July 17th through the 20th. And then we do have new member classes. Sign up is on the bottom of the weekly insert that you got, so you can rip this off on the dotted line. That's May 21st and June 4th, 1045 to 1145. So check out your insert for that, and then your bulletin for any of the other upcoming events. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So there is a correction on those dates for the new membership cl member class. It is May 21st and June 4th. I put 24th on the bulletin. Not to be reflected upon our secretary, I was the one who put that date in wrong. <laughs> so let's pray. <clears throat> oh, Lord, we thank you for meeting us in this place this morning. And Father, sometimes, you know, it's raining and it feels like maybe a good idea to just stay in bed. But there is no better feeling once we get here than being in your presence. To be with other people who come to worship you and to be in your presence as well. People who love you and we can, we can grab their excitement for you and we can live off of that and we can add our excitement to their life. And Father, there are many who have come here who have had a horrible week, horrible week, and they come here for your comfort and your peace. May they be provided with exactly that. There are some who come here who have had a fabulous week, week and they can't wait to praise you for the good things you have done. And Father, we pray that they feel that joy and, ex and exude that to others here. Father, we know that when we come to you, you provide what we need. Whether it is the celebration, whether it is the, the um, comfort, whether it is the peace, whatever it is that we need, we know that you will provide. So we come here before you, being in your presence and just letting you be our God. May all that we say and do today glorify you, and may the Holy Spirit just fill this place and move our hearts and our minds towards you. Amen. Amen. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, stand up. Steve, it's not good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. <laughs> not, uh, I learned that from my wife of throwing people under the bus, so that's, that's what I do. So. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? So let's praise and worship the Lord our God. And let's open our eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you high and lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. your power and love as we sing holy 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 let's worship this morning holy 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 so i want to see time. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Amen. Nothing will I fear. Amen. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet.
There 
pray that one of those songs or all of those songs just really hit you this morning. The one that grabbed me was um, Hold Me Close. <sighs> so um, he will do that. He will do that. Bill, can you close those doors for me, please? Oh, as soon as the kids leave. Okay. I forgot. about. I forgot. I thought they were going to stay with us today. It is time for the kids, um, if they want to, can go back to Children's Church and um, hang out there and... I know you'll miss us, but try to have fun. <laughs> they went really fast. Thank you, Maddox, for staying with us. <laughs> I have a few prayer requests. Um, continue to keep Josh Meeker in your prayers. He was transported to um, Ross Hospital in Columbus, and he, um, they are evaluating him to be on a <laughs> transplant list, heart transplant list. So please keep him in your prayers. We continue to keep Robin in our prayers. Um, she had gone to St. Rita's. Um, is she back to the nursing home? Not today. Okay. Um, they're hoping to get her back there. Um, she had gone to the hospital with a complication, and they're checking her out. Um, Sheila Jones, keep her in your prayer. She broke her femur, and um, that is Tim Jones' mom, and she is two hours away from him, so he's got a lot of a lot on his plate right now, so pray not only for her, but also for um, her entire family. Please um, put Brian Combs on your prayer list. Um, he has been diagnosed with cancer, so keep Brian in your prayers. Um, we continue to pray for Curtis and, this, and for his strength to be built up. You're all kind of in different chairs. I don't think Curtis is here today. Um, he came on Wednesday, bless his heart. He came in. He had to, he, he was, who it tired him out to get from his car to the fellowship hall. So um, continue to pray for, for Curtis. Um, also, Kevin Wendell had asked for prayer for a coworker, Linda, from the Wapak Middle School. She uh, has cancer, and the fight is getting almost more than she can bear. And so please keep Linda in your prayers. I would also, um, I would like for those who um, came up here and gave their life to the Lord a couple of weeks ago, I would like for them to come forward, if you wouldn't mind, um, and stand here with me for a second. And I know that we are, have been praying for them, but I think it's very important for them to have um, a specific prayer partner. So if you feel so inclined to come forward and then commit to being the prayer partner for this particular person, please feel free to do that now. I'm covered there. <laughs> there are still people up here if you would like to come up. <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> hmm. Joe's trying to handle too, and he can, I'm sure, but yeah, there you go. Okay. And I'm going to, I'll have Nikki. And, there, and Curtis is on here, too, if somebody would like to, if I could give you Curtis's name. <laughs> I 
in Keegan. <laughs> okay. That one's Caden, but you can get Keegan too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I did too for the longest time. It helps me that one looks like Jesus and one looks like, <laughs> and one doesn't. <laughs> I think we have, we have everyone covered. Whew. tells us that when we find our way to your heart and we accept the gift of salvation that there is celebration that the glory of the Lord shines and the glory fills this place today and we are thankful for that pray for each one of these people that stands in front of us today that as they come together with their prayer partners that you would uh, encourage them that you would strengthen them your word tells us that we're not only to to make disciples but we are to be encouragers. So help us, Lord, to do that. I thank you for this body of believers, Lord, and I thank you for their dedication to being true to your word, for doing what you've asked us to do. We simply ask your blessing on each person that's here today. But most importantly today, Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for the gift of salvation that we have found in Jesus Christ. And I would be remiss if we did not make sure that uh, if you're here today and you have not invited him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, there is no better time. So as the Spirit moves you today, I would encourage you to, to be uh, attentive to that and that you let Bab or Joe or whoever know that, that you need to seal that deal. We thank you, Father, again for your love for us. We thank you for your amazing grace. We pray these things in the name of our Lord. And everybody said.
So before I do this reading, you know, yesterday I went through something pretty difficult. And um, there was a lot of people that reached out. And I couldn't even keep up with my phone. I didn't even respond to Pastor Beth. But there was one point in the day when I did pick up my phone and there was a message and there was no name, so it wasn't from my contacts. And it just simply said, Onward Christian Soldier. And as I go back through my phone last night and again today, it's not there. So it's real. The power is real. So let's read from the word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. He kissed Saul and said, I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the ruler over Israel, his special possession. When you leave me today, you will see two men beside Rachel's tomb at Zilah. On the border of Benjamin, they will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that your father has stopped worrying about them and is now worried about you. He is asking, have you seen my son? When you get to the Oak of Tabor, you will see three men coming towards you who are on their way to worship God at Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats. Another will have three loaves of bread and the third will be carrying a wineskin full of wine. They will greet you and offer you two of the loaves, which you are to accept. When you arrive at the hill of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the place of worship. They will be playing a harp, a tambourine, a flute, a lyre, and they will be prophesying. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed into a different person. After these signs take place, do what must be done, for God is with you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power and the truth that we find in it. Father, it empowers us to live this life. We thank you for... um, The way that we get to know you is through your word and that you don't leave anything unturned. We pray that this message comes through to each one of us individually as you would see fit. Amen. So let's back up just a bit to get the full picture of what's happening in this scripture. This is a conversation between Samuel, who was a prophet of God, and Saul, a regular man, just a regular old Joe, maybe not that regular because it says in chapter 9 that he was an impressive young man without equal among the Israelites, a head taller than all the others. Saul was the normal, everyday person, Samuel, the prophet of God. So in chapter 9, we read that Saul's father, this everyday man, um, or guy, Um, His father had lost his donkeys, and he sent Saul and a servant to go find them. And they searched, and they searched. They went through town after town that we can't pronounce, and they never found the donkeys. Saul suggested to the servant that they just go back home. He said, you know, at this point, my dad's going to forget about the donkeys and start worrying about me. But the servant had one more idea. He said, let's go to the seer. Let's go to this man of God who is highly respected. In those days, the prophets were called seers. It was years later that they started to be called prophets. So this was a seer. And the servant went up, um, um, the servant went on to say, everything this man says comes true. Maybe he can tell us where to look for the donkeys. And as they, (laughs) I feel like I'm telling a joke. (laughs) And the donkey said, (laughs) 
<laughs> so as they neared the town, maybe he can tell us where to look for the donkey. So as they neared the town of the seer, there were some girls out working, and they were drawing water, and they directed these men to where the seer would be. And he said um, he would be blessing the sacrifice at the high place, and then there would be a feast that would follow. And so they headed towards the town, and as they got there, there was Samuel, the prophet, the seer, the man of God. He was coming towards them right as they were walking into the town. So at this point in 1 Samuel chapter 9, we're given some insight into what has happened in Samuel's life prior to this. Okay, so there's some background in what's happening with Samuel. So the day before, so say this was a Tuesday, on Monday, the Lord revealed to, to Samuel that the next day, on Tuesday, he, God, would send a man from the land of Benjamin. God told Samuel to anoint this man leader of the people of Israel. Just a small task. He said, he will deliver my people from their enemies, the Philistines, my people God said, have cried out to me, and I have heard their cry. Saul and the servant, of course, didn't know any of this. They didn't know that as soon as Samuel caught sight of them, the Lord said to Samuel in his ear, this is the man I spoke to you about. This is who we talked about yesterday that will govern my people. Do you wonder how many times that happens in our lives? How many, how many times God is orchestrating something that we don't have any idea about and we like just walk into it? God gives a sign or a message of something to come and then sometimes later it takes place. And I also wonder how many times we try to explain that away. Or maybe God, you heard God say something and there is no explaining it away. Has anyone ever told you that you're their answer to prayer? My husband tells me that every morning. <laughs> he has told me that, but not every morning. <laughs> Some days are better than others. <laughs> well, this isn't exactly the same kind of story, but I want to share this with you. When we first opened The Rock, um, at the same, I wasn't a pastor then. The Rock was a resource and opportunity center that, um, that was in St. Mary's for 10 years. And um, so I had been asked, I wasn't a pastor, but I was doing speaking and stuff. And a group of ladies had asked me to facilitate a Bible study. And they said, you know, we don't have any money to pay you. I said, you're not paying me to do a Bible study. And so we did it. It was a overnight. It was a couple days. And so at the end of them collecting the money for the Bible study, they ended up with an extra $26. And they gave it to me. And I said, I don't need the $26. And they said, we know, but we want you to have it. It's, we don't know what else to do with it, basically. So they gave me the $26. The next day, I go to the rock, and there's a man waiting for me, and Ginny and Joe will know who this is. There was a man waiting for me at the entranceway, and he said, we had, we had been working with him, and we talked him into getting his GED. And so he's standing there, and he said, yeah, I went to my first GED class last night, and um, they told me I need a calculator. I said, you do? He said, yep. And I found one at Kmart, but I didn't have the money for it. How much is it, Jim? <laughs> $26. <laughs> so I drove him to Kmart, and he got his calculator with that money that I was merely transporting for the Lord. He did get his GED, too, by the way. God is in the details. Psalm 37, 32 tells us the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He not only goes before you, but then he lets you catch up and he goes with you. So Samuel just heard from God. This is the man I told you about. Samuel the prophet heard from God. He said, this is the man I told you about. And Saul had no idea whatsoever. He had no idea what was going on in this godly realm he was still looking for his donkeys. 
So Saul says to Samuel, can you tell me where the seer is? And of course, the seer says, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. But anyway, so he, <laughs> so he said, I am the seer. That's actually what he said. He said, I am the seer, and Samuel takes charge. And in chapter 919, Samuel says to uh, Saul and the servant, go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you are to eat with me, and in the morning I will let you go and will tell you all that is in your heart. I will tell you all that's in your heart. Oh, yeah, Samuel says, and for those, as far as those donkeys are concerned, they've already been found. Saul had not told Samuel he was looking for donkeys. So as all of that didn't blow Saul's mind, then Samuel says to Saul, and I'm here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all Israel's hopes. And at this point, Saul is probably looking behind him to see if there's somebody else that Samuel is talking to. Saul explained to him, I am from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe. And then in that tribe, I'm from the least of the clans of that tribe. Why are you saying all of this to me? And Samuel didn't continue with words or explanation. He simply took Saul and his servant into the hall. He seated them at the table with the 30 who had been invited. And then Samuel tells the cook, um, bring the piece of meat I gave you, the one I told you to lay aside. And the cook brings out this special piece of meat, and he sets it in front of Saul. And Samuel tells Saul, here is what has been kept for you. Eat because it was set aside for you for this occasion from the time I said invited guest. And Saul is thinking, hey, I'm just looking for my dad's donkeys. <laughs> Can you imagine the exchange between Saul and the servant? And they pray we're giving little sideways glances like, what is going on here? So the next morning, while they ate with Samuel, and then they ended up spending the night there also, and then the next morning, um, Samuel told Saul to let his servant go on. He said, and stay with me for a while so that I can give you a message from God. <clears throat> and this is where today's scripture comes in. That was the message that Samuel gave to Saul. But I want to give you a quick note about what's happening with the Israelites at this point. You know, God's chosen people. This is about 350 years after the Israelites had fled Egypt. Moses, remember, led them out of slavery. Moses, who also didn't think he was qualified to do anything, and God told him otherwise. And while they were wandering in the wilderness, Moses was the judge and jury for everything that happened with the people. All decisions to be made for the people as a whole were on the shoulder of Moses. And there were estimated to be 600,000 Israelites under his rule. So he was overwhelmed, to say the least, and Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, gave Moses some advice. In Exodus 18, we read, select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over hundreds, th or thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases they can decide for themselves. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and all these people will go home satisfied. And that's what Moses did. For the next almost 400 years, the people of Israel were ruled by judges. In 1 Samuel, we read that the people were begging for a king. And why were they begging for a king? Because that's what everybody else had. Every other country was ruled by a king. They wanted a king too. 
Well, Samuel didn't like the idea. God hated the idea because he knew what the king would do to their land. He also knew that that was a direct insult to him as their ultimate king, as their mighty, true king. But he told Samuel to give the people what they wanted. Did you hear that? God knew it was wrong, but the Israelites insisted. And of course, they thought they knew better than God. God gave them what they wanted. And that's why we pray, not my will, but yours be done. (laughs) So, innocent Saul gets pulled in by God. He is chosen by God. And when he thinks all he is doing is wandering around looking for donkeys, he now is in the midst of God's will. So after the servant left, as Derek read, um, Samuel grabs a flask of oil and pours it over his head. And then he kisses him, which is a sign of reverence, of um, respect. And he tells Saul he's doing this because, and listen to this, he's doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be ruler over Israel. You are to rule over the Lord's prized possession. And we read nothing of Saul saying a word. Shock disbelief. I mean, he wouldn't even know how to respond. And Samuel continues, you will know all of this is true when these three things that I'm about to tell you happen today. When you leave, you will see those two men beside Rachel's tomb on the border of Benjamin. They will tell you that donkeys were found and now your father is worried about you. And two, when you get to the great oak tree in Tabor, you will see three men walking towards you on the way to Bethel to worship the Lord. One will bring three young goats. One will bring three loaves of bread. One will bring a wineskin full of wine, probably the first words that really registered with Saul since he had oil poured over him. They will greet you, and the one with bread will give you two loaves. You are to accept them. When you arrive in Gibeah, where the army ford of the Philistines is located, you'll meet a band of prophets coming from worship. They will be playing a harp, tambourine, a flute, a lyre, and they will be prophesying. And the prophet Samuel tells this ordinary man Saul, from the smallest of the clans of the smallest tribe of Benjamin, And at that time, the spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed into a different person. And scratching his head, Saul says, so they found my father's donkeys? (laughs) Can you imagine what was going through his mind? Saul hadn't asked for this. He hadn't prayed for it. It was simply God's will for him. Things were different before Jesus. God called individuals and then poured his Holy Spirit upon them for a task for a specific time. I need this man or this woman to do this assignment, and I am going to pour out the Holy Spirit on them in order to complete this task. The Spirit came upon them by the power of God. They didn't necessarily come to God and say, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness, and then the Holy Spirit come on them. In the Old Testament, God did the choosing. God pulled his chosen to him, and then he poured out his Holy Spirit on them. Saul had no idea this was happening. It was about to happen. He wasn't sitting, you know, like meditating and saying, you know, what's next for me? Mm, Come, somebody, something. You know, he wasn't sitting and, and just begging God to tell him what the meaning of life truly is. God chose him. And he either orchestrated the donkey, donkeys running away or he used that for his good. We don't know. But what we do know <clears throat> is in order for Saul to do what God needed him to do, 
God empowered him with the Holy Spirit. Saul could not go into this assignment of being the first king of Israel without the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do God's will in our life without the power of the Holy Spirit. We read in chapter 10, verse 9, that as Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart. And all these signs were fulfilled that day. And when they arrived at Gibeah, a procession of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him in power, and he joined in their prophesying. That same Spirit is available to us. That is the Holy Spirit that resides in us when we accept Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. Remember when Jesus went up, when he, when he told the, the disciples that he would be leaving them, and they were so sad, and he said, I have to. I have to. Then the Comforter will come to you. That is the Holy Spirit. And unlike in the Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit is not poured over us for only an assignment for a short, specific time. The Holy Spirit lives in us. The Holy Spirit takes up permanent residence in us. We live in the power of the Holy Spirit every minute of every day. Does that empower you right now? Do you just feel like you can conquer anything? Because it should. It should. Romans 8, 11 tells us, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Don't ever underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. And don't be surprised when that Holy Spirit moves you to do things you never thought you would do. I, for one, am thrilled with Derek's future because he's got a plan. And he's shutting the door, and he's got a plan. That's right. That's right, Maddox. That's your dad. And he's going to and, – and it, just stay tuned. Something's going to happen. That's how it is with all of us. And leave yourself open. You don't even know. The worst situation turns out to be the best because of Jesus. On the night our dear Jesus was betrayed, he had dinner with his disciples. He had supper with his disciples. And um, they too didn't know what was about to happen. <laughs> Jesus had told them, but it was just too much to take in. And the one way that he described it to them is that he took bread and he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body given for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he poured the cup and he said, this is my blood. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink in remembrance of me. So, Father, we pray for your blessing upon this bread and this cup. And, Father, may they be for us the, bread, the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. And, Father, may it bring us together as one body to go to witness to the world. Amen. I invite Sandy and Brenda to come forward. And Joe. We'll do this by semi-intinction, where you will take a cup. I'll have you go over here. And bread. So you'll want to be first. 
and the individuals on this side will come this way, and the individuals will, this will come this way. And we are blessed beyond measure today to have special music as you come forward. Let's start in the front and work up.
God is speaking to each and every one of us. And sometimes all we have to do is open our eyes. More importantly, open the eyes of your heart. And let God speak to you. We're going to close with open the eyes of my heart. So if you would stand with us, please. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, oh, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, oh, I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. receive this blessing Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week.